Thank you, Natalie, for joining us today. Go ahead and please introduce yourself, your name, major slash any minors, or if you have any pre-professional tracks and what school you go to. All right, thank you for having me. Um, hi, I'm Natalie. <laughs> uh, I am currently studying at Duke University and I'm pursuing a major in International Comparative Studies with a minor in Economics and Certificate in Markets and Management. <laughs> and I am planning on going down the business track um, in terms of like post-grad plans. Um, haven't decided that yet, but on the business route. Uh, sounds good. Uh, first question would be, what made you choose your major? And, um, like, your minors and things. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was a mouthful. <laughs> um, so coming to Duke, I I actually went in thinking I was going to study econ, and then um, just after taking a few classes, decided that I had many other interests and mm -hmm. skills, and basically like every school has like different program offerings and at duke um there wasn't the international business program that i wanted so i then took classes in international comparative studies and econ markets management to piece together a coherent story of like international business and i decided to do that all um, under the umbrella of like international comparative studies. Oh wow, that's a lot. So like you kind of made a major of your own based off like what was available to you and like the resources there. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, actually I feel like I should have said that at the beginning, like oh, no, I'm no, no, no. international <laughs> business here. <laughs> all good, um, all good. Yeah, uh, but this is like um, based on like the the offerings, like I could tell that Duke really wanted you to just explore different fields. They didn't want you to be too pre-professional. And like, because of that, I did end up taking like a few classes like here and there and then yeah. piece together. Yeah, this sort of curriculum. Sounds good. Seems to be working out for you pretty well for now. <laughs> yeah. I'm having a blast, so, <laughs> so far so good. Um, our next question would be personally, how did you feel about the application process? It was uh, the application process was definitely very tedious and very complicated. Um, it was there were a lot of steps, and I remember having to keep a, like an agenda, like only for college application purposes. Um, I mean, like you've also been through process yourself. Yeah. I'm sure you know, like there are like common app deadlines and there are also like UC app deadlines and then some for financial aid and other deadlines. So like for rec letters and stuff. So definitely um, a lot of just very chaotic and quite hectic. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get most of your information for school and like the general application process? Mm -hmm. um, I was pretty lucky to have a supportive network of mentors. Um, I did um, from like our high school, we had a few counselors who offered assistance in certain fields. And then outside of that, I also asked a lot of, like by mentors, like it literally, like this could include anyone from like alum from high school or like friends in college or just yeah. really um, like anyone that like, had that had been through this college application process like um i reached out to and then i then like considered them like a mentor and mm -hmm. then online like oh my god bless the internet bless google um <laughs> very very helpful to yeah. search um things up so um, a lot of like mixing and matching of like resources yeah uh how would you rate the overall difficulty of the application process and like would if you could pinpoint like a hardest part of the process and like an easiest part of the process, what would it be? Mm -hmm. um, are we talking like scale from one to 10 or like? Um, yeah, scale okay. from one to 10. I would say the, like overall, the entire journey was probably a seven, um, 
seven, seven and a half. Mm -hmm. And like, funny enough, the hardest part wasn't really like the actual work, but just knowing where to start because going into, um, well, I actually started my college app like journey a bit earlier than other people. I started in junior year and just How really start huh? How like early? January of junior year. So this was like spring semester of junior year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so like knowing where to even start looking, that probably was the hardest part. Um, and then like once we, once I started to realize like what I needed to do, like what the college app even looked like, then like putting in the work and stuff like that was um, like in terms of difficulty for me personally, like secondary to just making sense of it all at the very, very beginning of things. Mm -hmm. And like all in all, I know you started really early. How long did the application process in itself take you? I would work on it every week. And mm -hmm. from like, so if you're saying, if we're talking like, from January of junior year to January of senior year, like a whole year then. Oh, okay. um, and the reason for that is I knew I, there was a chunk of my summer that I wasn't able to be in the US and wasn't able to access like steady Wi-Fi. So yeah. it, I, I knew I wanted to start early and to space things out. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it honestly, like I have friends who have like, done apps like literally like the night before yeah, or, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I may or may not have also done one of, that one or two times but like the whole entire process for me um from like starting the app to finishing it we're talking like a year actually not every day working on it but like weekly probably like a like year a few hours a week kind of thing or yeah yeah I would probably say like when I was actually working on it um I would say like maybe three to five hours a week. Yeah, that seems about right. Um, if you could have changed anything about the way you went about the college application process, what would you have done differently? Hmm. Would this be like how the college application process like works or how I approach the college application how process? How you approached it. Okay. Because we as students are not really in the power to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice. Even, you even know. if we did yeah. wish we had the power to do so. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, mm, I think it would be nice to have worked with Arcadia High a little more. Um, oh, sorry. I mean, I don't know if we need to say that, but oh, no, no, that's, that's okay. yeah, from our high school. Um, because like, like if if I weren't to change like. The college application process but change like how I approached it and change the sort of like resources mm -hmm. I had or reached out to like um the careers I'm not even career center the like what were they called <laughs> our counselors uh, but I forgot like the uh, the name of like the team um but there were some like there were a few I don't know counselors if they had a name. um let's see or were they just like your counselors in, in I feel general like they were just your counselors because everyone was assigned yeah. a counselor, right? What, 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 didn't we have like a, was it called a career center? Um, and then like, or the little like, the room by, uh, in like a building, that room? It might have been. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember anymore. I know, it's so, so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, like, I think it would have been really, really nice if we had time and resources from the high school to support us along this college journey. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, it seemed like, worked on college apps on the side, mm -hmm. and it was just not very, it seemed like we were learning one thing in school, and then on the side, we were like, we had to figure out like how the college application process like worked. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I know like the like high school, when they say that like, to prepare you for college, like maybe that was in terms of like courses or like your general education. But I think it would have been really nice if the counselors had um, been more accessible mm -hmm. in either like revising or just even looking over your like apps or just having like a 
a one-on-one -on -one, like sit down chit chat about hey like you know what are even if you're not going to college like what are your like um post like high school plans because it seemed like that was very much like on, on us as, on as students own. yeah I think that also kind of has to do with like accessibility in terms of how many students per counselor there were wait no counselors per yeah, like so how one many counselor many students. students. Yeah, yeah. How yeah, many got students you. <laughs> each counselor was in charge of like mm -hmm. too probably way too much to be able to actually do that. Like yeah. But I understand what you mean by that. Mm -hmm. Um how and why did you decide to do, go to Duke specifically? Mm -hmm. Um I would I would like I consider myself a pretty flexible person, pretty adaptable, pretty open minded. So mm -hmm. I actually had a list of like schools that I would have like considered attending and um, I think would have been happy going to. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it was looking like after the initial screenings and like filterings and like mm -hmm. um, looking at this school in terms of like stats, it came yeah. down to looking at like the qualitative side of the school, like the culture and the um, and the programs. I knew I wanted to go to a place that would challenge me, mm -hmm. push me out of my comfort zones. A lot of my friends ended up staying in California because they felt like they just really embraced that familiarity, having, mm -hmm. you know, been like born and raised here. And that was something that was like hard to let go of at first, but mm -hmm. I knew like if I really wanted to change like and grow as a person college was the perfect time to do that yeah. and then start as I started to look into Duke some more I looked I found a um, a website that listed out the like adjectives for Duke students and they did this with other um other school students too oh really what's but the, do you remember what the website was called oh my god uh oh it's okay if you don't i don't remember i don't remember the, the, the exact name of it um but like i just remember typing into google like like school and like student and like adjectives or school and like student demographics or something yeah and then there were like um like the top three words were adjectives that i felt like described me like it was almost yeah. as if like if they were giving like a very personalized like report or like analysis of you and I was like Dang. like wow like if this like mm -hmm. sounds like me and I like I I love like all these programs and just mm -hmm. the general like feeling like I think this is like a, a pretty good like choice um and then afterwards I I actually didn't visit Duke before mm -hmm. applying but after applying getting in and then visiting like my mind was pretty set it, how would do you do you think the visiting experience added a lot to your deciding whether or not to go to specifically duke or like not other schools mm -hmm. i do think like if i i mean i know given like the current like yeah um <laughs> circumstances that might be a little difficult but yes like i would say that the college tour like the visit in person um did play a pretty big role mm -hmm. I was always like I had this <laughs> I just I mean people have stereotypes of like college yeah. students especially like you know east coast west coast mm -hmm. um but like actually going there myself and talking with like some of the students there um talking with like the um I went to like visit some of the departments in person yeah, and talked yeah. with like their like program staff too like that it was it made me feel like Duke really cared about supporting you mm -hmm. and like your goals yeah. um and it was very much like it just something just felt like right mm -hmm. um so I I, that's you were I, able to find something like that yeah yeah, yeah for sure me too <laughs> yeah Actually, like going back like to the application process, like I remember you said that actually getting started was very like the hardest part. So how did you go about that very beginning part and like 
what were your first steps? Mm -hmm. uh, wow, in the beginning, it was honestly like talking to a lot of people, like mm -hmm. uh, before like getting the like official start. Mm -hmm. And then once I sort of had an idea, like after talking to many people and like compiling all these resources, then I was like, okay, now I have enough information to work with. And then I believe I started like just doing research. And then this like marked my like official start. And then as I had like more questions, I then um, like reached out to these like different advisors and like mentors again. And then like, I didn't want to bother like, well, <laughs> part of me didn't want to bother any individual person, but then part of me also knew that like, these they all have like their different like strengths or areas of expertise yeah. so like i reached out to that specific person for like this specific like question, question, so, question. Yeah. yeah and then like eventually through this research led you to like your list of schools you wanted to apply to Is that yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a lot of uh like revising the college list mm -hmm. too uh because like honestly like when i started like I had a lot of schools I wanted to apply to that mm -hmm. like I had just like heard good things about, yeah. but I didn't really like know what like programs were offered, where, I mean, the location even was. Um, mm -hmm. So like having that initial list and then from there on, like definitely like putting in the work like yourself too, to like do these research on these schools. Now that you've, uh, been in college for almost three years now or like heading oh. into the third year <laughs> um, um yeah. yeah yeah uh what advice would you have for incoming students for getting used to a new place making new friends with just different backgrounds in general mm -hmm. yeah um I would off actually like before even going into college like I have like some advice for like selecting colleges yeah. too, just even thinking about oh, like yeah, what schools to attend to. Um, I would suggest the student to like break down the the decision analysis into four main parts. Or I mean, there could be many more, but like the four things that you absolutely have to think about are um, let's see. One is like campus culture, mm -hmm. like just the school spirit. And then another would be like the academic, like Rigors? academic slash like academic extracurriculars, like mm -hmm. programs. Yeah. Like what's and available? Then, sorry, what? Like what's available? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. And, th and then I can like go into that world a bit more later too. Um, and then I would say the like sort of support. And by like support, I mean like financial support, if that mm -hmm. is um a consideration uh if like cost would be like yeah, a, a big part of the decision and also like other support systems so mm -hmm. if you have if the school has any sort of like mental health services or what sort of like by looking at the sort of like, the types of support network at the school like you can kind of see how, like the structure of the school so if there are like a lot of like peer programs or um like like help like but it's not necessarily like from like a top-down sort of structure like you can see how it's like people really wanting to collaborate to help each other out mm -hmm. um and well actually for now i can for now let's just say there are these three um mm -hmm. so like the academics and then the like support and then the um campus okay. culture and like school spirit um and i think the biggest thing is like for academic side is yes like classes are important but what i have found to be even more rewarding is tapping into the academic extracurriculars and by that i mean studying abroad or doing research with a faculty member and at duke for instance like there um there's a lot of like duke in fill in the blank. So wherever you want to go, like study abroad. Um, a lot of them are for credit too. Um, there are those options. And then there are also a lot of research opportunities on campus or with faculty members like throughout like the Durham 
rally like research triangle area mm -hmm. um and also like opportunities that include a service component like Duke service learning, like there was the Duke Engage program. I feel like I'm just plugging Duke right now. <laughs> but anyway, like, these are definitely things that like have like stood out to me in the past. And then now being able to actually like do these programs, like mm -hmm. I feel like, oh, yeah, like I made a really, really good decision. Cause like, I know a lot of the other schools maybe not, don't have as robust a program uh, for study abroad as Duke does. And that was like mm -hmm. a big part of um, the decision to attend Duke. Mm -hmm. um and then in terms of the like support um kind of talked about a little bit before about um you want to see like some this is something that also like i thought a lot about the type of environment of the college a lot of colleges that i applied to and then initially considered going to were definitely high caliber but also had a lot of competition mm -hmm. and what i what I remember hearing on the tour was like my tour guy said, Duke is a place that has competition, but the competition has never exceeded the collaboration. So this, even if you have a competitive environment, there is some sort of like collaborative like element to it. Um, and that like really spoke to me because it seemed like in high school it was very individualistic. Yeah. And I have to agree with you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like this this line just like stuck with me. And like to this day, I do feel that like even if there is competition, um, people are there willing to help. Like, and it's kind of like let's improve our team as a whole as opposed to let me be the one to stand out mm -hmm. um and also like mental health it, that's a very very big one and i wish more people talked about it actually um uh, both like the process of oh my god this is okay mental health can be like we would really like start unpacking things there but like oh, yeah. in the application process too like were you were you stressed overwhelmed at all like of course I, yeah, yeah it was so having someone there to like really oh my god so like from there like the beginning of the college application journey like checking in on that mental health so important mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um because like the worst thing you would want is to burn out before college even started yeah and that like i mean then what would be the point of like going to college yeah. right if you're gonna be like just a walking like skeleton <laughs> um, i think honestly for me what piece or what like kept my mental health together like during the application process was just thinking about how like I am giving this process my all and that's all I can possibly give and beyond that it's out of my control kind of with like the COVID situation and like any other situation there is I'm like giving my best effort in what I'm in control of. And then beyond that, it's totally out of my control. So why am I worrying about it? Right. And just like let things flow and go as it comes. Of course, like doing what we preach is like another thing, but like that like main idea kind of stuck with me and was what kept me together in terms of mental health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that definitely is, is a very good point. Thanks for bringing that up too. I wish like people honestly like and I don't know if this is like an Arcadia thing or like an Asian thing but like mm -hmm. the idea of like success and what that looks like and how that's very like one path like to sex is like oh my god like it's if definitely you, not one it path. really is it like no yeah <laughs> it's yeah. not and like had we known about that earlier like I feel like a lot of people might Mm -hmm. be in like healthier mental places yeah, yeah. Like, both of us agree on this idea that success is definitely not one path how did you come about seeing this i like concept more and mm -hmm. believing in it more yeah one well i feel like this is like twofold part of it was going to college and seeing how these like uh, brilliant bright minds just from all backgrounds were doing 
really, really amazing things and different things too. So some people were like doing like, while some people were um, like really focused on getting into like med school, like business school, some people were then working on like startups on the side. And then there were some people that like, I mean, dropped out of college altogether and then started pursuing something else like full time. And it's like, they're honestly, it, it's so like, what does, what is like success? What does that even like look like? Like, I feel like in seeing many, many different people be successful in many different ways, like that is what showed me that like success doesn't have like one path or yeah. like, you know, one picture. Yeah. And then the second part of it is something that like I discovered within myself after doing some reflection. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to try to be as humble as possible as I say this, um, but I think after high school, like especially senior year, yeah. I thought I had achieved success, whatever that meant. Like I thought I had been like set, like, okay, I got into a good college and I have these great like connections and like I have great friends and stuff. Oh, awesome. Like, you know, set for life and stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how wrong was I <laughs> so then it's like thinking that wow like you like this was it definitely it took a lot of reflection and a lot of like a lot of emotional lows yeah in like realizing this and then accepting it um especially during that like first year in college um, like thinking that like what other people thought was success, like what they saw to be successful, like in me, perhaps like I didn't view as successful as myself because like I knew that there was um, like a lot more that I could be doing a lot, like a lot more growing. Yeah. And like, I mean, at the, end, at the end of the day, I feel like success really is like this value judgment. You decide for yourself, right? What success looks like. And for me, like, I kept wanting to push myself, like, more and more. And then, but then, like, improving, like, on my own terms, like, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Like, we're all so. walking our own, like, path. And yeah. on your own right. terms with your own character because you can't really, like, compare with other people because they're not mm -hmm. you. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, um, like, something I heard was, like, don't measure like yourself with someone else's like ruler mm -hmm. I mean like really like these sorts of comparisons like I understand where they're coming from it's like to like yes like partly to improve yourself but then like for your own self like for your own reason not yeah. for any sort of extrinsic like external factors mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely like a tough barrier to cross once we do like yeah yeah um also wait, i feel like uh, i'm trying to like connect the lines back to like making it up because i feel like we went down like the logic tree a little bit um uh, mm -hmm. let's see what were we talking about beforehand okay actually like speaking of pushing yourself past um like past like new goals and new things like what was something you got to do in college that you weren't able to do back in high school or mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well a lot of things um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um I'm okay I'm gonna give like a more like conceptual answer and then one that's like a bit more tangible okay. um in terms of like something that's more tangible it would be the the academic extracurricular opportunities yeah. that I mentioned before um experiences with study abroad yeah 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 sure like just uh studying abroad or studying away from your institution mm -hmm. does like it's incredible what that can do for you as a student but even more important as a person mm -hmm. this sort of like learning is not something that you can get in a traditional classroom setting yeah. so like really well, tapping Mm -hmm. What was that experience like for you specifically? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did 
Well, I did one and a half study abroad slash study away experiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first one was, uh, why, why it's one and a half is because one was actually like abroad abroad and then one was mm -hmm. like virtual, but <laughs> uh, I mean, cause like, yeah. you know, Zoom and all. Uh, mm -hmm. But the first one was, um, I did Duke in China. So I studied abroad in Beijing for about two months. And this was a program that was um, like you not only learned about the Chinese language, but mm -hmm. you also learned about like the economics, the politics, the culture, and like learning about China from a textbook is so different than actually immersing yourself in, in China and in that environment, right? So. Uh, it just really made me open my eyes to the different sorts of like talents and what is out there in the world. Like, I came back a new person. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, as like, like not to like make that over dramatic, but like really, I honestly feel like if I could like pinpoint, like there were like two life changing moments in my life so far, and one of them was the Duke in China program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and and also like being away um it does a lot for you being independent and learning mm -hmm. to think on your own and being responsible for your actions too uh, and then the like more conceptual answer would be the about like what um i have done like in college that i wasn't able to do back home yeah. is um uh, is about that sort of exploration and risk taking Mm -hmm. I would say I um I have like a very loving family and I was blessed to have like such supportive like parents mm -hmm. um but I would say like they definitely like while they encouraged me to pursue different activities they also wanted to protect me mm -hmm. uh, and I know it came from a good place in their heart yeah yeah um <laughs> uh, sure you can relate too yeah, yeah definitely um, really so slowly starting to realize that you are, I feel like college is like really, is the, like, is the uh, filling or like the meat between like the, like high school and like the real world. Because mm -hmm. like in, I'm trying to like imagine like a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, which one's the lettuce? <laughs> well, it depends on like how you order a sandwich, but, uh, but yeah, like I think like, <laughs> I think like the, like, college journey as a whole like a lot of it is that sort of transition um and you think like a lot of people think freshman year is a transition year but I feel like college as a whole is always like transitioning yeah. um if you think about like 18 years of your life like living in like one location or having like one one like community and one group of friends or um just very like like that environment allowed you to grow so much and then mm -hmm. like from there on, like in college, like you're gonna be exposed to all these amazing people, like from different walks of life. Mm -hmm. And then from there on, in like going on to work, like then you're gonna be like exposed even more. So, like, definitely really like, like make the most of college as that transition period and exploratory period. Mm -hmm. um, so, those would be like the concrete answer and like the more conceptual answer. Yeah. Um... Being in Duke, like, how are your class sizes like? Do you have more of large classrooms or small classrooms? And like, what was your experience like with those? Mm -hmm. It's been a mix, actually. So the more introductory classes will have more students um, because, like, for prereqs or for students who just want to explore a field, but um, not go like the full like go for the full mi major or minor yeah um so I'd say like the bigger classes have about sometimes like 100 to 200 students mm -hmm. um and this is like the biggest biggest ones I'm talking about um and then the after like those initial like like basic like 101 classes introductory sorry not basic introductory like classes um then the size drastically decreases to about, I'd say like 15 to 25 students. Mm -hmm. And actually what Duke does is they require you to take a first year seminar too. 
So starting from like in the early stages, you will already have this sort of intimate setting and you can, you have more of the opportunity to speak up and to like bounce ideas with each other and to be heard because I know that can be kind of difficult in like a large lecture setting. And a lot of these like large lectures will actually have lab components or seminar components so that you can um, like scale down or have like a that sort of more like one on one feel. It's not going to be like, I mean, it's like, it's depending on like the type of class that you're taking. Um, yeah. Or, like the classes will be like structured differently yeah. but like I don't like most of the time it's been about like 15 to 25 students mm. do you have any experiences with a lab class mm -hmm. yeah uh, what was um like? um like with lab um so in terms of like on the tech side like we have mm -hmm. labs when we're trying to code or when we need to work on like projects and teams that require these programs that mm -hmm. um, are only accessible on school computers. Mm -hmm. And then like a lab in a more medical setting. I've also um, had that for like, I've taken like psych classes that have required us to um, also have this like, if you will to enter like a lab facility into um, exactly like brains or you know, stuff. So um, labs like, I think have been very, helpful in like, having that hands-on experience like not only learning about it or doing assignments like from a textbook but also getting to like work on a computer or to like touch your brain and so, and so. touch your brain okay, well, I, I don't <laughs> yeah, know I better. maybe to like you know like yeah. engage in some more you know like yeah, yeah. Hands -on opportunities with the human body <laughs> yeah um i'm assuming since jake is so far away you dormed at college right um what was your experience living in the dorms did you dorm with someone you knew or a complete stranger and like how'd you go about like picking someone if you did pick someone uh, like kind of explain your experiences with dorming mm -hmm. yeah. so duke requires all students to live on campus for a minimum of three out of four years and the um, I mean those being freshman sophomore junior mm -hmm. um, and my year was actually the first year that Duke decided to go with a random roommate assignment process so what this meant was you would fill out a questionnaire and then you would like they would ask you questions about like your sleep schedule or your preferences for um, like in terms of like gender neutral or uh, like single gender and like your like different aspects of like your life and lifestyle they will ask you about and then they paired you up with another individual that matched those preferences so the like this was a very very big pivot from how the roommate assignment how, like, oh, how, from how roommate selection um, occurred in previous years in which you could like choose a roommate but for yeah. me it like honestly this was the best thing that honestly had happened like in terms of like housing because I didn't I was like the only one from our high school to go to Duke my year so I mean I didn't really know anyone beforehand anyway yeah but like I was I was paired with one of like She's like one of my closest friends to this day, um, but she is like, comes from like a very, very different background than mine in terms of like, in terms of race and in terms of like other like sorts of values. Like we, we, de we definitely did have like things in common, which is what like, I mean, this is the process, like the purpose of filling out that questionnaire, but like, for instance, like being substance free and mm -hmm. like how, like maybe like sleeping later, mm -hmm. uh, but, other than that, like th we were like different people. Yeah. But I, I, I'm so blessed that this happened to us, like this random mm -hmm. roommate policy and us being paired together, because it really does challenge you to um, like expand on your current beliefs and to hear and mm -hmm. to live with like people like that you might normally not have pursued a friendship with because mm -hmm. of like physical differences or like mm -hmm. differences like in beliefs but that's definitely challenged me to like grow a lot more as a friend and as a person um, mm -hmm. and then like 
I mean, later on, you can, like, this is, like, first-year housing policy, yeah, yeah. and also, first-years have this whole, like, campus to themselves, so, like, if you can imagine, this is, like, the campus, the like West Campus, where it's school and, like, learning happens, mm -hmm. and then there's, like, a little shuttle that takes you to, like, East Campus, which is where all the first-years house, and that is so, so important, because as, like, a first-year, um, and I'm sure, like, I'm not alone in this, but it can be kind of awkward in, like, maybe approaching some people and yeah. when you are put in this community like you on it like there is no way to like not run into them <laughs> because yeah. like you're literally like living in the same like area mm -hmm. and like this was definitely like this I think this was I personally think this is a good move um and then from there on out the second and third years housing policy or situation is um you can choose to room on your own or you can choose to live with like if you choose to join any like selective living groups or like Greek life, um, you can choose to live in section with them too. Sounds great. Uh, what extracurriculars are you participating in? And like kind of like talk about those a little. Mm -hmm. In terms of like professional activities, um, mm -hmm. most of my like clubs organizations revolve around business and outside of those I um oh, I like I just love to dance and dance has like been like a really really big part of my life um in terms of like yeah like a physical activity side but also like the like cultural like element to dance mm -hmm. um I feel like I honestly spend like like every other day like like in one of my dance groups mm -hmm. um and it's like which I, I would highly encourage y'all to do by the way like because I, I had joined this like I had before college I had never done like Latin dance and then mm -hmm. I tried out for Latin dance was um fortunate to get in and like man like so now she can say she can salsa with chata <laughs> <laughs> but these like really these like oh, these like spontaneous or these sort of like the like, activities that you probably wouldn't have done like back in high school because you weren't comfortable or you were just like you stuck with like what you knew like yeah. you know scratch all that you know like explore like yeah. in college yeah and then in terms of like cultural activities and organizations I'm part of the like Taiwanese American Student Association <laughs> um TASA uh, yeah <laughs> and doing a lot of like like these I feel like there are like some organizations like that are more like academic or professional focused and then some mm -hmm. that are more like cultural and like social focused um yeah it's, it, I think it's like definitely important to have a balance of these different activities um and like if you end up choosing to go with like a sort of like Greek life organization or like an, a selective living group like would also highly encourage that like I'm mm -hmm. like a part of this like selective living group that um like you have like a common theme um and then mm -hmm. like ours is like languages and cultures and diversity mm -hmm. and this is it, it continues to challenge you to like learn and grow like even outside the school setting too could you kind of explain what exactly like selective living group means because like I don't think we have it at my college so like mm. just kind of explain what it means and like what you guys really do and what yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah for sure uh so selective living group is the sort of like umbrella term for different organizations that mm -hmm. uh have a common theme and that live together so this there's like a like a rush process like mm -hmm. recruitment process essentially um where you uh like new members or like um pr prospective members come and like meet the current members and then they um like over a series of like i think it was like three or four weeks um mm -hmm. attend activities meet people and then they're like certain members like are selected to then join this organization and the process is like it, some people can say like it's a little controversial but i think like if you approach this with like the idea of 
of meeting people and like trying something new Mm -hmm. um like it you know it doesn't hurt to just like try and like attend a few events even if you don't want to like rush this organization Mm -hmm. um so in a way it sort of is like rushing for a fraternity or sorority but the sorts of like activities that we, we do are more revolved around the theme and ours is like languages and cultures and diversity mm-hmm. so that's a little bit about the I see. Yeah. Yeah. thank you for sharing uh, also going on to our next topic what was your biggest struggle coming into college and do you believe you actually like overcome that mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry like kind of heavy here <laughs> Yeah, we know we're getting deep and personal. <laughs> um, the biggest struggle I had coming into college was feeling like I wasn't enough. And when you're going, when you enter any environment with mm-hmm. such talented and brilliant and like equally as well-rounded or as well-spoken as you like I think it's understandable to feel a little bit of like part of it is like admiration but part of it is also like intimidation Mm -hmm. and like feeling like maybe you don't belong there like I honestly had many moments where I thought to myself like oh my god did I get in by accident like am I cut out for this (laughs) um Like these people are all just like so much smarter than me, so much better than me, so much more active than me, like so much just more confident than me. And like, this is something that's called like the imposter syndrome Mm -hmm. that a lot of college students are now like opening up about. This is especially true for like freshmen, Um, especially coming from like a high in high school, like where you feel like you were, you know, one of the top students to coming and into college and feeling very, average like this is if if I could like describe how I felt like during freshman year in one word I would use average um and then what like my one of my counselors told me was like you have to think in attending these top like universities Mm -hmm. the like for instance like at Duke like the average Duke student is not the same as like an average like college student in general. Like there is that level of like, there's that standard there, there's that expectation there. Mm -hmm. And they like that just kind of helped me realize like, okay, you know, if like, if I, I know that I am like already trying my best and like, I still feel like, you know, like I'm average, like there, like just knowing that a lot of it was like in here, honestly. Um, I like freshman year was, (laughs) you really start to see your, your strengths and your weaknesses because in college, in high school, a lot of us were doing like everything um, or like there, and a lot of it was like choosing to like pursue activities that uh, maybe like weren't the most interesting to us mm-hmm. for like a better future or for like college apps. But, uh, um, but then in college, like you realize that there, like if you combine, if you pursue something without like that, and this kind of is like, it's like a <laughs> tangent, but like, that like if you pursue something like without even if you like try sometimes like that is you just you sometimes like won't do as well as other people and it's it was like it's really different that sort of feeling compared with like doing a lot of things and doing a lot of things well in high school um but like I think so like in terms of like looking at like your strengths and weaknesses like like I slowly realized like it was like okay to 
they cut down on the number like of activities I was doing and then mm -hmm. to start like like yeah definitely to like explore but then to also know like where your strengths lie and to have those show because that is where you're able to make the most contribution to your team and later on to like society as a whole finding the balance between like what's too much for yourself and like what's going to come out as the quote-unquote results and like that kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah for sure but, like I don't know if I would like like I feel like this sort of like introductory like transition period of like feeling like very average and not enough mm -hmm. is something that like and I'm still trying to tell myself that too that like most people feel even if they don't admit to it no yeah I definitely agree with you I am like so certain that most people do feel this way and mm -hmm. you're definitely not alone in the struggle like thank you for sharing <laughs> like, yeah it took a lot sure. yeah. and like I'm, I'm like but like sometimes it's hard to like know what's going on like with other people's lives too like but like yeah at the end of the day like, I feel like everyone is like fighting mm -hmm. their own battles right? and, um like making like some people kind of put up this like facade of like everything is okay and like mm -hmm. I'm doing great like look at all these cool things I'm doing and then like but then like the more like extravagant or the more like flashy they are on the surface sometimes like the more empty they are like on the inside and mm -hmm. also feeling like very similar to like what how we described about like not feeling like enough or feeling very average and it's you definitely never know the full picture and like what other people show it's definitely never what's going on fully because a picture or a few words will never truly describe a full story of someone's life and there's also like what we see about them and like what is actually going on i'm like yeah right sure <laughs> well moving on to a bit lighter of a subject but okay not entirely but do you have plans after undergrad or is it just like going along with what things are going on and like riding the waves as we go or kind of thing yeah i'm planning on oh 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 wait i forgot okay well <laughs> like this is something that i kind of decided like over like these past few months and part of it was because of that like remember how before i was like there was like that 1.5 like study of my experience yeah uh, like yeah. the 0.5 it's like i did a program this past summer like called like duke in silicon valley and mm -hmm. this like opened like it first just exposed me to like entrepreneurship mm -hmm. um and then it was like the course was kind of built around like, building and sustaining an enterprise so like now i have like a better idea well I have a better idea of what's out there. And then yeah. like, I like being someone that really wants to like explore and try new things. Like, I think what I'm going to do is after like these four years, I'm probably going to go into like finance or consulting for a few years. Mm -hmm. And then from there, maybe going into like entrepreneurship or perhaps going to like business school. Um, but like I now like just, I mean, it's, it's really difficult to say with, especially with like the, you know, COVID situation. Yeah, of course. Um, but getting some sort of like, like industry experience mm -hmm. and then like maybe starting something on my own because yeah. that's been something that's been on my mind for a while. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Um, I know you talked about how there are a lot of like resources at Duke and like that's what led you to your decision to choosing going there. Do you ever still worry about finding a job in the future with like what the job market holds in store for you in general? Or? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't know if there's like anyone that is like 100% like confident on that front mm -hmm. just because of like the changing demands of the market and the like changing like environmental circumstances mm -hmm. like I mean who would have known like COVID would hit and then yeah. now it's like even the most prepared people like who have these 
like very like flashy internships and stuff are like now either getting like their offers rescinded or transitioning to like a virtual format. So like mm-hmm. there's, there, it's so difficult to say with like certainty what's going to happen on the job front. But I do feel that there are a lot of resources with at the career center mm-hmm. um and they will like the thing is like they they will help you with like providing certain resources or yeah. like links or connections but then it will be on the student to follow up with that so like they won't do the work for you they'll have like some sort of guide and then yeah. you will have to be the one to like you also don't have to put in the work too like the effort yeah Mm -hmm. Um, but I do feel like they're like going to a place like Duke has, um, given me a lot of like opportunities to like network Mm -hmm. and the Duke alumni, uh, this community is just so strong that like, I mean, they're coming in and, um, constantly asking if students need help with, Mm -hmm. even if they themselves aren't in a hiring position, but just to like come for a coffee chat or to, you know, answer any questions you have about like their position or like the industry and, um, or the company. Um, like these are all like resources that, um, I feel I'm blessed to have as a student at Duke. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. Um, one last question to wrap things up. If you could give advice to high school students, what would it be? Uh, a lot (laughs) I mean not a lot like from personal experience too um but like if it's if it's one thing I would say it's to know what you value and to pursue that Mm -hmm. that sounds like pretty like high level or general Um, but I think this is going to like kind of guide the decisions you make later on in college and or like whatever opportunities you choose to pursue post high school if you like have a strong sense of this is what matters to me then you will save a lot of time and energy in going down like detours or like and like it's okay like if you do end up doing that because like like the path to, to whatever your like success like looks like will be windy and all but if you like can like really have like have spend some time to yourself to think about what it is that you like what brings you meaning what brings you purpose how can you bring meaning to purpose to other people or to the world like these are I mean these are really like hard questions to answer to um but and this is like something else to, like if you don't have the answer like right away for this sort of like long-term goal break it down into like smaller goals and smaller steps like mm-hmm. from now like and maybe you can give yourself like a year to just start like um like where would you like to be and like what would you like to see like accomplished um because oftentimes it can be very challenging and overwhelming if you look at like the like end goal if you even yeah, yeah if you like long term goal um but the the idea of like um thinking about like what like if you can also definitely think about what is expected of you from like your family or from like your mentors or from your peers but they will honestly only be with you for so long before you have to start your solo journey into the real world yeah. and the like I, yeah like the sooner like you realize that like and start to plan accordingly like the um dare dare I say smoother of a route it'll be like it'll still be bumpy like regardless but um like to like pursue like that life full of purpose and meaning starts with you identifying what you value Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you I think this advice that you give is definitely connected to 
how you brought up with like struggling with mental health and imposter syndrome earlier kind of like um if you own your own values and you know what you're working for then what you're working for is just for yourself not like for selfish purposes but like to like love yourself in fulfilling ways right uh, in which like um the mental health stuff would be less of an issue because you spend less time comparing with other people and more like just working towards your own goals instead of what you think other people expect of you and also related to oh I think there was something else but like I definitely see how like definitely like your college journey has translated through this advice as well like how you said like with salsa dancing like just exploring something for yourself for like just to explore because why not and like definitely like if you want to go more towards your own purpose and like discovering your own journey like that will definitely help with you more in the long run and definitely agree with that advice yeah no you summarized it beautifully <laughs> thank you <laughs> Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today and good luck with the rest of your journey. I hope to see good things happening in the future. I will end the video right now. <laughs>